Is fast population growth good or bad for economic development? Well, this Tutor to You topic video focuses on countries where population growth has been and is rapid in relative terms. So which countries are experiencing the fastest growth of population? Well, here's the data for 2021. Obviously, this is a snapshot. South Sudan's population grew by over 5% in just one year. All these countries have population growth at or above 3% per year. Now, annual population growth refers to the change in the population over time and is affected by factors such as fertility, mortality and the net flow of migrant workers. Taking a slightly longer perspective, here are the countries with fast population growth, uh, using averages for 2005 to 2010, 2015 to 2020. But again, you get a similar picture here. Very similar countries. Niger has the fastest population growth. And of course, this links in with a very low median age. So assess the extent to which fast population growth is positive, is a stimulant for economic growth and development. Well, here are some key points. Uh, some of the potential benefits from rapid population growth include, first of all, the fact that these countries tend to have a young median age. And fast natural population growth will encourage an increase in the size of the population of working age, which, assuming those people are active participants in the labour market, can then increase long-run aggregate supply, causing an outward shift of a country's production possibility frontier. And you might want to think about how you could draw a diagram to help analyse that particular point. Now, providing per capita incomes are rising, and that, of course, is an uncertainty. If you have population growth of 3% or more, then GDP has to grow by the same amount just for per capita incomes to stay the same. But providing incomes per capita are rising then population growth increases the size of domestic markets. And that factor encourages economies of scale in production and also increased investment spending by businesses. More people in work leads to a widening of the tax base, people paying taxes on their income and their spending and their wealth. And that helps to improve government finances and uh, public services. Population growth and urbanisation often go together. A population growth increases density and alongside that process of rural urban migration can lead to benefits from agglomeration economies. So fast, popul fast population growth in cities encourages agglomeration economies of scale and uh, there are some significant benefits from that. And also a fast growing population can be a catalyst for research and development in, and innovation in farming. Uh, often the increased population puts greater pressure on the farming sector to produce the food that we need to eat. But the fast growth of population can act as a catalyst for innovation. That innovation is designed to increase crop yields, encouraging perhaps a green revolution. But what are the risks and drawbacks from fast population growth? Well, fundamentally, you have a fast growing young population with many young people entering the labour market. And that generates major challenges, major difficulties in creating and sustaining enough jobs in the formal economy, reasonably well-paid jobs as well, to prevent a huge increase in youth unemployment. And high rates of youth unemployment are typically associated with countries where population growth is fast and the economy is not generating just enough jobs to absorb those young people starting work. Fast-growing population holds back the annual growth of per capita incomes. Again, I make the point, GDP has to grow by at least population growth each year for per capita incomes to stay the same. And uh, if the annual growth of per capita income is held back, that makes it harder to satisfy people's basic needs and wants and can lead often to rising malnutrition. And there are externalities and social costs of population growth. Fast population growth puts tremendous pressure on the natural environment, including growing demand for water and energy to heat our homes. And of course, that can threaten biodiversity. And we've mentioned high rates of rural urban migration. That can lead to problems associated with urban density, such as crime, the spread of disease, and much higher and increasing levels of income and wealth inequality.
Uh, Urbanisation, hugely important this year. So here's a night scenery on the right-hand side there of uh, Shenzhen City, viewed from the Hong Kong border, actually. This chart shows the degree of urbanisation in China over the last 42 years. And you can see that Chinese urbanisation has continued apace, from 20% in 1980 to over 63% in 2020. So China has urbanised fast. And of course, that shift of population from rural to urban areas has been one of the greatest, most significant movements of population in the world's history. You can see here, for example, this uh, disconnect, the growing divide between the urban and rural populations in China. Uh, the urban population exceeded the rural population in the early part of this century and is now much, much higher. Vietnam is a good example of a country which is urbanising, although not at the same pace as China. Indeed, uh, although, uh, to, be, to be fair, uh, two-thirds of Vietnam remains rural, but the urban population has been growing significantly, and it reached 37% in 2021. So there's been a fall in employment in farming, more and more people are moving to the cities uh, in the hope of higher per capita incomes, uh, more availability of jobs, and so on. Now, according to forecasts, the uh, urban population of Vietnam will surpass the rural population by around 2050. So there we go. Is population growth good or bad for development? Hopefully this video provided you with one or two points to make.